Get ready for a lot of crane action in South Texas today. Your regular host, Das or John Galloway, is still preoccupied with other things. So for now, I'll be taking over, but he will be back soon. So without further ado, let's start with this Starbase summary, throughout which I will show you around all the parts of Starbase you never thought you wanted to see. We're starting with the Massey's test location, where we just saw the three test tanks, B18.1, B18.3 and S39.1. And uh, one of them, B18.3 in uh, particular, is now undergoing tests at the Massey's test location. And 18.3 is a test tank for the booster forward end, so the end that interfaces with the ship, while 18.1 is a test tank for the aft end where the engines are installed and ship or S39.1 is a ship test tank also for the aft end. Now on well slightly to the left of the middle of the screen you see this uh, structure uh, this truss structure that has been going up in recent weeks and that is for the ship static fire stand. Meanwhile we see some uh, testing of that ship aft end test tank that I talked about S39.1. Now over at the production site, uh, still seeing the mega bay, sorry, the giga bay going up with these four cranes, and right next to it are the mega bays, the tall buildings uh, behind which the sun is going under right now. Starbase is, uh, yeah, quite known for the beautiful sunsets through these uh, Starbase summaries, I think. Uh, it's not the most picturesque place in terms of buildings, but the sunsets and sunrises are pretty, pretty nice. Now we're moving over to, I believe this is some part of the launch site. Um, particularly this is the part where they are building the air separation unit. So you can already see that uh, they've done a lot of work and they've installed some compressors and also some pump motors and these are going to uh, separate air as the air separation unit name suggests and they're going to separate it into liquid oxygen and liquid nitrogen both are commodities that SpaceX is using quite a lot on site for filling the ships uh, the starships and super heavy rockets uh, and also for testing them we're still at the air separation unit location but now at night um, and I believe that what we're seeing in this white structure is a concrete pump which apparently they need to clean um, which makes sense you don't want uh, the concrete residue to set on the machine um, and still at this location they're preparing a side a pad for a crane so uh, yeah they're making a solid base uh, it looks like they, they want to make it exactly level 2 uh, to put a crane on and that crane is actually mo being moved right now. So this is SpaceX's own LR11000 crane. So they're using cranes so much that at some point they just purchased one of them, uh, one of their own. <laughs> so that is the one that's on the move right now. You can see the SpaceX logo on it. And these yellow structures, uh, I'm not too up to date with the crane lingo, but we saw that arrive uh, at Starbase in a previous update, either the last one or the one before that. Uh, don't really remember, to be honest. Uh, but yeah, they arrived at Starbase recently, and uh, they've since been installed on, onto this crane, and the crane is now being moved. And just like when they're moving starships and super heavy boosters and other pad infrastructure they're using these SPMTs, the self-propelled modular transporters uh, which are just these vehicles with loads and loads of wheels that can be um, steered very precisely uh, and also carry a lot of weight a lot of mass I should say probably <laughs> uh, and yeah they're, they're lowering the thing here and just just a bit yeah they should be rolling it underneath uh, out of the crane so that's how you move a big crane like this and yeah I guess this is just installed now or put down on the pad uh, we saw them preparing earlier uh, though it's up on a lot of blocks of wood 
So here you can see the air separation unit or the start of it with the pumps and the uh, compressors on the left and the crane on the right. And it looks like they're already building up the crane. Like I said, I'm not too familiar with the, the crane jargon, but I think this is the boom they're working on. Uh, and these cranes really are very, very customizable. It's like build your own crane and SpaceX is doing exactly that. Uh, they're, yeah, for whatever task they're doing, they can decide, okay, this, the, the crane, this crane part needs to be built up out of this many sections, or we need to add something to it. And now they're adding this, this red portion to um, extend the crane boom, I suppose. If that's not the, the correct word, let me know down below. Um, so, yeah, it's almost kind of like Lego. Uh, they can just add parts to suit their needs and to suit whatever job the, the crane is going to do. And there is another part moving into frame. So, yeah, we've actually seen them reconfiguring these cranes in between jobs like adding extra movable parts to the top or something. <laughs> or, uh, like I said earlier, the, the yellow part just arrived at Starbase uh, in the last couple of weeks, and they added that because apparently this job needs it. So, yeah, and this is, uh, uh, yeah, this is the yellow part on the, on the right I was talking about. But, um, yeah, there's another part on this truck. And I'm not sure, but it quite, kind of looks like it's tapering, so that might mean that it is one of the top parts of the crane. Meanwhile, we're looking at the launch site now. Um, I believe that the site with the air separation unit was somewhere in there, but I'm not exactly sure where. Anyway, we're now looking at the first uh, launch tower, the launch tower of Pad 1, which is... Uh, yeah, right there in uh, in our frame. Pad 1, of course, the launch pad that all the Starship flights until now have launched from. But um, that has kind of come to an end because they're now working on Pad 2. And Pad 2 is specifically designed for the Starship and Super Heavy V3. And they're also going to reconfigure Pad 1 uh, for V3. But that will take quite a lot more time. In the meantime, this pad is getting ever so slightly closer to being ready and we're seeing it's, it's yeah, very far outfitted though there's still a lot of work to be done apparently because we keep seeing people m moving all around these uh, tower parts and this is the, the ship quick disconnect arm and I thought I saw some people moving around but I'm not quite sure if they, they were Anyway, I believe this is at the same height of the tower as the ship quick disconnect arm, uh, around the middle. And the quick disconnect arm is, of course, the arm that connects to Starship, that connects the, the propellant feed lines to the ship, and also disconnects these lines from the ship up at uh, the moment of liftoff. And yeah, indeed, like that was the area we were just looking at there in the middle of the tower. And now we're, we're moving up and up and up. You can see that as we're getting higher and higher, the uh, amount of infrastructure and lines and all that on the tower decreases. This is much further down. This is the, the chopsticks carriage. So the chopsticks being used to catch the super heavy boosters, but also to lift the rocket components onto the pad and onto each other. Um, the carriage moves up and down to the, the tower. And apparently there is some work that needs to be happening on there as well. So this is one lift coming down and another lift coming down as well. So one is this, uh, this yeah, aerial work platform, I suppose is the, the right term for it. And the other is the lift inside the tower. Because of course people need to be moving up and down this tower a lot. Uh, especially now it's still being outfitted. But even when uh, the outfitting is done, people will need to move up and down. So that's why it has a lift inside. And this is the uh, propellant farm for uh, the, the launch pads where the liquid methane and oxygen and nitrogen will all be stored. Um, meanwhile, this is still the second launch pad, launch pad 2. And uh, yeah, we're seeing close-ups of the orbital launch mount here. Something must have changed. 
because usually that's why we show these things. But I can't, I don't really know why. Or perhaps it's all the same, or just li like looking at close-ups. So this is some uh, a lot of venting. Apparently it's the same uh, as what we used to call the OLM vent on the previous launch pad. That was a, a fairly important launch pad uh, vent sorry, in the uh, countdown timeline. Um, I've kind of forgotten what uh, its meaning was, uh, but some of my colleagues here at NSF know that much better than I do. Either way, um, it was an important uh, signifier for the the timing of the countdown procedure. So seeing this vent will be very important in the launches, in the countdown for launches from this part as well. With that, uh, we've reached the end of this Starbase summary. Thank you for watching and uh, be awesome everyone.